thank the choir for that selection. Precious Jesus, yes. how I love you. Yes. How I lift high my voice with your praise. Yes. Yes. Holy Spirit, I implore thee, drench yes. my heart yes. as my lips part your grace. For I am persuaded, Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. And I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship thee. Let's bow before the Lord. Father God, here we are. In your holy and divine presence, yielding ourselves to you. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you for our lives, our health, our strength. God, we thank you for this moment. Because, Lord, we know if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? But you've proven yourself over and over and over and over again that you are on our side. Thank you. Thank you. Daily new mercies we see. That you would not allow us to be consumed by all the things going on around us. But you kept us and you brought us. And God, we just thank you for being our keeper, our sustainer, our protector, yes. our strength. Yes. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody was on your side. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody was on your side. Yes, yes. It wasn't just anybody. All right, come on. All right now. Yeah. But God yeah, right. is the somebody yeah. that was on your side. Yeah, yeah. There are times we might not even want to acknowledge it. We might forget about it. But no matter what you do, it's been God that was on our side. Yes, yes. Uh, David writes about it this way in Psalm 124. He says, If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now Israel say, If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our souls. And then he says, blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. And he closes saying this, Our help is in the name of the Lord. Somebody was on our side. Yeah. 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 
our help is in the name of the Lord, yes. the maker of heaven and earth. Yes. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Psalm went some, again, 124. Somebody was on your side. Yes. Now that just came to me this morning because I, was, I started out at on our side and I started out at if it had not been for the Lord. But then it came to me somebody. At the beginning of the year in Bible study, we had the privilege of spending some time in the Psalms and there we discovered that the 150 divisions of the book turned out to be a library of man's pouring out his heart to God in praise, thanking God for his goodness, even venting to God concerning our fears, our frustrations, our disappointments and challenges. Yes, as I went through those psalms and studied them, I found myself there over and over again because the psalmist said just what I wanted to say. He said it just the way it needed to be said. And I said, wow, look at this. They were feeling the same way I'm feeling all those years ago. Man is man. We just do the same thing over and over again. So we discovered also that some of these psalms were written for or two special occasions. Right. Psalm 124 is one of those psalms written by King David to be used or to be sung on the occasion of going to worship. It's a part of a collection of 15 psalms, 120 to 134, that are called the Psalms of Ascent. Mm -hmm. The Psalms of Ascent, meaning going up. And this is why they are named that way. And they were to be sung while the Jews were on their way to Jerusalem. They were ascending up to Jerusalem for the celebration of Pentecost, Tabernacles, and the Passover. So in effect, it's a processional hymn. That may sound familiar to some of us. Years ago in our bulletin, and I don't remember how recently, we'd had a, a, a line on there, the processional hymn. Yes, right, right, right. Everybody singing together to worship the Lord. And that is what this psalm was about. The Jews getting together to go to the annual feast as sending up to God in Jerusalem to worship him in spirit and in truth together. So it was a processional hymn. Now, worship is an upward experience. Yeah. It's an experience for the believer. As we approach the throne of God, we're going up. In worship, we are lifted spiritually to a higher plane to experience God and the sweet, sweet spirit of his presence yeah. in this place. In worship, we are lifted to the presence of God yeah. where we can get a foretaste of glory divine. Worship lifts us up above our mundane earthly existence to joyous and divine fellowship with God. Worship lifts us up. Now the purpose was to focus the worshipers' minds on what the Lord had done for them since the last time. So that when the actual worship began, there would be no question about why they were there or who they came to worship. Right. Now, seven days is just a little bit of time comparatively to how much time was between the different feasts uh, that the Jews celebrated. Right. But since the last seven days, yeah. since the last time we were together, yeah. you ought to think about how good God has Praise been God. since the last time Praise we were God. here. You ought to think about what he brought you through in just the last what just the just the last 24 hours think about it somebody has been on our side now it's thought that David was writing this particular psalm and he may have had in mind the time when uh, he defeated the lion the time when he defeated the bear 
the time when he defeated Goliath, as we talked about in last Sunday's sermon, or maybe he thought about how he had survived all of Saul's threats to his life, the overthrow of his kingship by his own son. David, like us, had many reasons to thank God for being on his side. David had a lot to write about, but he, he did a short version of it for us here in Psalm 124, just eight verses. So we're going to take a look at this brief psalm. Now you heard what I said, look at the brief psalm, not a brief look at the psalm. <laughs> Amen? In verses 1 and 2a, the psalmist uh, in some ways sings the chorus or the theme of the psalm at the beginning of the psalm. And he says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. And then he asked everybody to join him. He says, now Israel say, but I'm going to say, now Greenview say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. He invites the other pilgrims marching to Zion to join in with him. The psalmist could probably stop right there and they'd be say no more. Mm -hmm. And everyone would get it. Because most likely, since the last time we were here, as I've already said, there have been personal, family, community, national and international problems and challenges and calamities and tragedies. Yes, yes, yes. Because sometimes yeah. that's just the way life is. Yes, but God was on our side. Yes, was. Yes, God was. is on our side. Yes, These two clauses bring us to one certain conclusion in the midst of all life's trials. And that is no matter what's going on, uh -huh. no matter what you're going through, the Lord is and he's the only one who can see you through. Now, who is this Lord? He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. He's the in the beginning God, the, the creator of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the promised land God, the God who gave us Jesus the Christ yeah. to save us as our, from our sins. Yeah, yeah. This is the Lord that David is writing about. Yeah. Now, the if in these two clauses also implies that were it not for God, we could have been consumed. We could have been overwhelmed. We could have been defeated. Or we could still be in trouble. But God was where? On our side. Every one of us here has our own, if it had not been for the Lord, testimony. I can look across the audience right now, and I see people who I know they can say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where? Would we be? Now, I, I, I'm certain that everyone can say that if they will or not. But you can say that if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, then there's no greater reason you have to say if it had not been. Because if it had not been, I'd still be on my way to the place nobody wants to go. I'd still be tied up, tangled up, wrapped up in the ways of the world, not knowing how to get out of it, but he was on my side. The Lord is on our side. Now, Jeremiah wrote also in Lamentations 3.22, and through 24, if it is, it is the, of the Lord's mercies because of God's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. 
And he said, then great, <laughs> great, great is thy faithfulness. Somebody was on my side. I don't care how hard I tried to figure it out. I hadn't been able to figure out how to make one strand of hair grow up here again. I think about it every now and then. Then I look in the mirror and everything's still the same. I haven't been able to generate one breath on my own. Only because of the breath that God blew into my nostrils that I might be a living soul. I haven't been able to make the sun rise. I haven't been able to make the sun set. Now, you know they have this thing in astrology where you can name a star after somebody. That's all well and good and get this little certificate and all of that. But I haven't been able to make one star to shine. God is on our side. I've been through a few things in my life that I have no desire to go through again. Once was enough. And I'm sure you can identify some things in your own life that you would say ditto to that. Now, these last two and a half years have been just about enough. And they've been just about enough. But look where we are. We're still here today because God was on our side in the midst in the midst of COVID-19, the war in Ukraine, monkeypox, the people being out of work due to COVID, inflation, polio, torrential floods, heat waves, social unrest, gun violence, sickness, family tragedy. But we are still here because God was on our side. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. We couldn't do one thing about any of these things. But God has kept us, has seen us through it all. Y'all know it's hard for me to get away from music. I ain't going to get into it right now. But I thought about it as I was going through this word. And I could hear Deacon Super singing, Look where... He brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. So that's verses 1 through 2 and part A. Let's see if we can get through uh, verses 2B through 5. I'm going to go fast because I'm looking at the clock. And verses 2... B through 5, the psalmist then spells out what things would have been like mm -hmm. if the Lord had not been on our side. He says, men rose up to take us out. They attacked me. They would have swallowed us up quick when, the wrath, when their wrath was kindled against us to turn to ashes. The waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the proud waters would have gone over our soul. Look where the Lord has brought me from. Look what the Lord has kept me from. The attacks of men, men trying to swallow me up. Men's wrath being kindled against me to try to turn me to ashes. Waters. I read that part. I mm -hmm. thought about the people over in Kentucky. I believe that's where it was. Yeah. Saw a few uh, pictures on the news about the water just rushing yeah. down the street, overwhelming people, and saw a few people in it. Yeah. 
Now you think about that. Thank you, Lord. And this is what David was describing. Mm. It's like being in water that's rushing and you yeah. can't even control it. You can't save yourself. You can't do a thing. Lord, mm. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But look where, look where he brought me from. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, David, in some ways, repeats Psalm 23 and 4 with that description. When he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy stab, they comfort me. Let's look at these verses again quickly. Men rose up against us, but God was on our side. They would have swallowed us up, but the Lord is my strength. And my shield. Yeah. Their wrath was kindled against me to try to turn me to ashes. But God was my refuge and my strength. A very present help in trouble. Yes. The waters would have overwhelmed me. But God covered me with his feathers. Wow. And under his wings I trust. The stream would have gone over my soul. But God kept my head above the waters. As I passed through the stream, he was with me through the rivers, and they did not yeah. overflow me. Yes, yes. Then the proud waters would have gone over my soul, but God rescued and delivered yes, yes. me. Yes. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear the Lord and the strength of my life? Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumble. And they fell. Because God was on my side. Verse 6 and 7. Uh, David kind of inserts a little praise break here. And he says, praise the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Who did not let their teeth tear us apart if it had not been for the Lord. He goes on, we escaped like a bird uh, from a hunter's trap had it not been for the Lord on our side. The trap is broken and we are free if it had not been for the Lord on our side. And then he closes the psalm with verse number eight. Mm -hmm. Our help is from the Lord. Yeah. Our help in the King James Version is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Yeah. David was pretty plain and pretty straightforward here. He said our help is in the name of the Lord. He didn't say our help was in the name of Abraham. He didn't say our help was in the name of Isaac. He didn't say our help was in the name of Jacob. He said our help is in the name of the Lord. Be careful. Be careful who you call for help. Be careful who you put your trust in to help you. Oh, sometimes I, I said earlier we forget about it. Mm -hmm. We might be sitting in our home or sitting in our office or wherever we're sitting and we look at the sheepskin on the wall and we think, that helped me out. That sure was my help. <laughs> Sometime I get online, open up my bank account, check out all the digits. Oh, what a help. <laughs> Sometimes I, I think about a time when I was growing up, mm -hmm. trying to learn how to swim, jumped out there and the water was too deep. <laughs> but I don't give the lifeguard all the credit. He gets some of it, but he don't get all of it. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where or you think about your own if it had not been and as you think about them you ought to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus for saving me thank you God for 
for keeping me. Thank you, God, for keeping me when I ain't had sense enough to keep on. But go. Oh, you may as well just give him all the credit, all the glory, because there's nobody like him. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. The name of the Lord is power. The name of the Lord is strength. The name of the Lord is protection. Now, if any of you paid in a little bit of attention to me over years, you know I have this interest in the name of the Lord. So God's got just about a name for every situation you need a name for. And this is what he was saying when he told, uh, when he told Moses, my name is I am that I am. The thing about I am that I am is that it's comprehensive. It covers everything in every situation so that God can be the somebody you need whenever you need it. Oh, but let's... Let's go a little bit more biblical than what I just said. Because when I needed him, his name is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. When I needed him, his name is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. When I need him, his name is Jehovah Nisi, my defender. When I need him, his name is Jehovah Shalom, he's peace. When I need him, he is Jehovah Shama. The Lord is with me. God is on our side. Now that was an Old Testament take on things. Let me give you a quick New Testament take on it. The fact that God wants to be on our side. The good news is that he sent his only begotten son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God wants to be on your side. And then he said through the angel, as the angel spoke to Joseph, he said, and his name shall be called Emmanuel which being interpreted is God is with us. He wants to be on our side. Jesus said that before he ascended into heaven, he he came back and he said to his disciples, all power. Now that's the kind of God you need on your side. The one who has all power of heaven and earth given to him. And he ends that uh, familiar passage by saying, And lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Jesus also said, I will send you a comforter to be with you, who is the Holy Spirit. In the Greek, it's called the paraclete. What it means, he's by your side. God is on our side. Paul raised a few points as well. We're going to get out of here. Paul said, if God be for you, who can be against you? He's on your side. Paul asked a rhetorical question, what can separate us from the love of Christ? And though Paul gives a list of things that people might think of or think could separate us, the answer in the final analysis is nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ because God is on our side. Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this moment in time where we've been able to look into your word and to gain more confidence in you, knowing that you will be on our side. So God, we thank you today for being on our side. We thank you for being on our side of every tomorrow to come. 
God bless those who have heard your word that they may be an increase to their faith cause them to love you more to follow you more closely these things we pray in Jesus name and now let us receive the benediction and now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us here henceforth now and forevermore and all of the people said amen amen Amen. Let us go outside and have a good conversation. <laughs>